Hey everybody, welcome to the Sky Lounge here to review some Lakers action as we win 113 to 110. I am here in beautiful Dallas in my hotel room reviewing this game, which happened last night. And the Miami Heat, funny enough, are going to be in Dallas tonight, a game I'm going to, to watch Luka Doncic, or my little jersey there, can't really fucking pinpoint uh, exactly because perspective kids, but... The fact is, I'm going to be headed over to American Airlines Center to watch Luka Doncic take on the Jimmy Butler-led Miami Heat. Now, you have to realize, too, that this Heat team has been pretty damn good. 11-0 at home, and the Lakers are coming in to face a very difficult task. And sure enough, I mean, in that first half, you just saw how much the Lakers struggled um, and how good the Heat have been. But... Rest assured, LeBron James in the game, just doing their fucking thing. LeBron James and his posse of basketball stars. And more or less in that second half, I mean, the Lakers switched it on. There was really no doubt in my mind when I think the clock went down to about five minutes and the Lakers were up by, I think, eight or six points. And despite how close the game got towards the tail end of this, I never really felt any kind of an unease uh, when the Lakers have that kind of control and domination very late in the game. And of course, you can argue uh, Jimmy Butler, uh, Dunn, uh, Kendrick, uh, Ken I'm sorry, Kendrick Nunn being a huge factor uh, into the Heat almost coming back. But again, this speaks to the confidence and the you know, just next level tier that the Lakers are in right now. And that's not an arrogant thing to say, I don't think. At this point, 23-3 uh, and three record, I think the record speak for, it speaks for itself. It absolutely does. And I know there are assholes out there who think, you know, Kawhi and PG, what they're doing is great. But beyond the duo, that team is just kind of meh. The Lakers right now have been immensely impressive. But... Let's not get this shit twisted. The Miami Heat brought it on last night. They brought the Heat in Miami. Starting with Jimmy Butler, 23 points, 3 rebounds, uh, 3 assists, 4 steals. I mean, this guy is a perennial all-star, and we understand the complications that he's faced with former teammates, especially in Minnesota and Philadelphia. But we know what kind of a fucking workhorse he is. We know what kind of competitor he is. And so... Jimmy Buckets is somebody I really do appreciate and just have immense respect for. And again, it's just incredible to watch these guys just battle it out and make the Lakers look somewhat mortal, especially early on in that game. I mean, a lot of teams do, but when they switch it on, they switch it on, right, for the Lakers. But again, the Miami Heat were pretty incredible to watch. I mean, guys like Adebayo, 12 points, 12 rebounds, 5 assists, 1 block, I mean... You don't have Hassan Whiteside anymore, but you got this aggressive young cat just getting at it and doing the damage, along with Kendrick Nunn. This kid has been a phenomenal story. I mean, damn near undrafted, damn near um, overlooked by almost every team imaginable. And now he's just capitalizing on his opportunities. 16 points, 2 rebounds, 7 assists, and 2 steals. Phenomenal night for him, too, um, even in a loss. And, again, these uh, Miami Heat players are going to be facing the Dallas Mavericks in Dallas tonight. Going to be headed over to that game. Really can't wait to watch them. Um, they have really shown me through, through that last game how impressive they are and probably will continue to surprise a lot of people. And, man, the Heat bandwagon is back, folks, so be on the lookout for that shit. But... Man, oh man, we're talking about bandwagons. I mean, the Lakers have a lot. They, they got a lot of fuckboys and fuck girls coming at us, you know, saying, oh, we've been Lakers fans. All right, I haven't seen you in the last few years, but sure. Lakers garner a lot of attention. I mean, when they're good, they're good. And this rendition of the Lakers, my God, it starts with two guys, Anthony Davis and LeBron James. Anthony Davis with 33 points, 10 rebounds, one assist, three blocks. I mean, just what, what else can you say about that? He's, he's incredible. He is absolutely incredible. Uh, LeBron James, 28 points, 9 rebounds, 12 assists, 1 steal, 1 rebound short of a triple-double. 
pretty phenomenal night for him when he's coming back to Miami. A lot of love shown by guys like Chris Bosh. Shout out to Chris Bosh. I mean, just a phenomenal fucking player. Just unfortunate that his time ran out in terms of his health. But such a crazy, you know, culture in that organization in terms of... When I say crazy, I mean in terms of how deep it runs. I mean, it starts with Pat Riley. It ends with Pat Riley. And that team has gotten better um, this offseason and they are proving to everybody that hey they are a contender in the east and we set the eastern conference for quite some time but the east is actually gearing up to looking pretty well so damn but that's that's not our prerogative right <laughs> you're a lakers fan you don't give a shit about that what you give a shit about is how great the lakers played last night um dwight howard didn't have the best of games, but he's fitting into the equation very well right now. I mean, I love what he's doing. Um, there was a story that came out that Dwight Howard was actually giving AirPods to all his teammates. And I'm looking at that and saying, you know, as the big fucking uh, softy that I am, I'm looking at that shit and thinking, oh my God, Dwight is the best. Like, you got to give Dwight a fucking contract. This guy has been phenomenal. He is the glue that keeps everybody together. I mean, so was Jared Dudley. So has, I mean, Jared Dudley's been a consistent chemistry glue guy for quite some time. And when he gets playing time, he does the work. And I know people are going to look at that stat line and think, oh, he only made one basket, one three. Well, he did other things like stealing the ball, rebounding, assisting. I mean, come on, man. That's huge. And everybody else in the Lakers team, they don't have to give you those 20, 25-point games. You know what they have to do? They just have to do their job. As long as Anthony Davis and LeBron James are being themselves, you know, 20-plus point guys, if our crew just does their job, we're good to go. Like JaVale McGee getting five blocks. You know, Avery Bradley posting up shots, you know, mid-range jumpers, you know, playing defense. I and mean, it's key. Caruso just being an absolute nuisance to the opponent on the defensive side. These are the things that you need for a team to do well. And I understand that people want to just assume that points are everything. But the reality is, you know, everyone just has to do their jobs. And the Lakers have been doing phenomenally. So, hey, hopefully they keep it going. I believe they're going to be playing Sunday against the Atlanta Hawks. And then Tuesday against the Indiana Pacers. And then a national broadcast against the Greek freak Giannis Antetokounmpo. So we will keep you on the lookout for that. I don't know why I had to go William Shatner on that shit. But there you go, boys and girls. Follow me at Sky Lounge and all the links in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe for more daily content from me here in the heart of Dallas.